booth at the VMworld 2014. We're at the Evo Rail Challenge and I'm joined by Mike Leverick. Hi Mike, how are you? I'm very well, although my feet are very tired and my voice is even tireder. So you lost your voice, it's Thursday, you've been partying. It's a great, great VMworld, isn't it? It is, it is, and I'm all the more special because my favorite band, Simple Minds, played. Yay! Yeah. So you got your record signed by the lead singer, Jim Kerr? Yeah, I was down at the front with my records, which I bought when I was 11 and 12, believe it or not, and got the mighty Jim Kerr to sign my records. I'm oh. so pleased. Oh, so great, stuck. great, great. So we even got a picture with Jim Kerr and the rest of the, the band. So That's you know that they're, they're going to release a new album at uh, the beginning of November. Yeah, yeah, a new album. and. Uh, I think it's uh, first in about uh, five or six years, so I'm really looking forward to, right, to getting so. it. Back to business, so the Evo Real Challenge. People are doing uh, some kind of a lab. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit on what people have to do here? Well, basically the appliance builds out in just under 15 minutes in most cases, about 12 minutes. But there is a little bit of a config at the beginning where you have a range of IP addresses for both vMotion, your management network, and also vSAN. So because we're a little bit cruel, we put some bum IP addresses in there, a bad default gateway in there, and a bad subnet mask, because you don't want to make it too easy. So the challenge was really, could you look at the config of the uh, Evo Rail and spot those errors and then go off and build them? So as you can see on the timer in here, somebody managed to build an entire Evo Rail and create a virtual machine in just over 50 15 minutes, which is pretty phenomenal. Amazing, just over 15 minutes. Yes. That guy must be glued to the keyboard. So, as we, we discussed already, if, if you put people under pressure, they are not able to see a, a, a bad subnet mask anymore. Or yeah, I was uh, sort of sat a number amongst the people and I was kind of saying, look at that router, that, that uh, it's subnet mask. You're saying the router's on another network, and generally a router or a default gateway has to be on the same network as you to have any chance of moving a packet to somewhere else. So it's funny, as soon as uh, you put a timer on, people's keyboard skills start to melt, people's ability to spot a subnet mask error, which is something you do all the time, suddenly goes to pot, it's quite funny. So, Mike, your, your previous role was uh, uh, in the competitor role, uh, looking at other products, but you changed roles uh, recently, so can you tell us more about your new uh, uh, function at VMware? Sure, I mean, my previous role, my official job title was the Senior Cloud Infrastructure Evangelist, but I spent nearly 50% of my time looking at what competitors were doing and helping our internal people look at those technologies and see whether they're a good fit or a bad fit for the, the organizations that we represent. But I hadn't spent any time with a product team, which is one of the things I wanted to do inside uh, VMware. So when this opportunity came up in early August, um, I, I jumped up both, uh, with both feet, jumped yeah. with both feet, yes, to, uh, to get in. So it's the first time that I've got uh, a dev team, product manager, a biz de development team, the logistics people. And the Evo Rail team is like a little startup inside VMware. I mean, albeit we have the power of VMware marketing, we've got legal support, we've got all these other functions outside which normally a startup would have to find themselves. So we can be very focused on the tasks that we need to do. But it's, it's really cool to be involved in a, a brand new product before the evening at G8, a week before the G8, I'd done the move. But the way I'm looking at it is, there was a time that ESX was a new product. There was a time that SRM was a new product. There was a time that VMware View was a new product with all the products that I've been associated with in my time with VMware. So for me, it's like, on the inside, I'm now doing that, rather than on the outside as a, an instructor or as a, a blogger or as a writer. So, do you miss the instructor days? So we all know you have, you just like me, or you have been a VCI. It's great to teach for a class, isn't it? Yeah, I do sort of miss being in front of the guys in that way. And as you know, it's a great test of your uh, knowledge because you stand in front of people for five days, eight or nine hours every day, and they pummel you with questions. Um, so I do kind of miss that, but I did in my own career, and you, you know yourself, you want variety in your uh, career. So, I mean, I don't know, maybe in a few years' time I might go back to being an instructor. Because back I to the classroom. Back to the classroom, because there's nothing like being in front of customers who are using the product every day, in, inside and out, and want to know all the features for keeping your own knowledge fresh. I mean, I was on one of Eric's courses just a couple of uh, months ago on vCloud Director, and I had Eric telling me, oh, we can do this in vSphere, and I was like, <laughs> you can? 
<laughs> How did that, when did that get introduced? So it's very easy if you're inside a company as big as VMware to start to get quite narrowly focused on the product that you're dealing with or the technologies you're dealing with and other parts of VMware are still progressing and still improving. As you know yourself, trying to keep up to date on everything that VMware is doing is quite hard. But that's one of the reasons I started the Back to Basics series on my blog. So I thought, if I go through every single aspect of vSphere 5.5, like I used to when I was an instructor, it will help me keep my knowledge up to date. So that's something I want to carry on doing, even though I'm in the Evo Rail team. I will still be doing that back to basics series on MikeLaverick.com. Notice how I got my URL in there? Yeah, so MikeLaverick.com, uh, great that you share to URL. So the, the whole Evo Rail challenge ends today. Um, is there some kind of a final this afternoon? Well, the final was just had when we have got a winner who did it in about 15 minutes and 35 seconds. There'll be a, um, an announcement of that at half past three this afternoon down at the Evo Rail Pavilion in the Solutions Exchange. He's won a free ticket to uh, VMworld US or EU, depending on his preference. So there'll be that uh, announced. But don't forget, there is a hands-on lab where you can have a look at Evo Rail at any time. But we thought it'd be really cool to have the physical equipment here and actually have like some sort of fun with, with the product because the actual uh, process of building the Evo Rail is so quick and automated, it's a great way of demonstrating it. In fact, during the last challenge, they were both building at the same time. 1%, 2%, 3% on both servers. So the only difference between them was how quick they could get through the UI to actually create a virtual machine. I was saying to one of the developers, two boxes, you both click, you know, start at the same time, they both count at the same time. It really shows how predictable and reliable the software is even if it's on two bits of hardware, it runs at the same rate. Right, great Mike. Well, many thanks for the interview, and we will definitely take a look at MikeLeverick.com. Thank you very much. Thank you.